Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. When you think of a song that talks about God being big, what comes to your mind? That's right. My God is so big. We're going to sing that song this morning, okay? So I want to hear your singing voice. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. Shall we sing it once more? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. When you think about another song that talks, we just sang about the rivers are his. When you think about another Sunday school song with the word river in it, what that comes to your mind? That I've got peace like a river. That's right. We're going to sing that song too. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul, not my shoe. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. And I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. So I've got peace like a river, I've got joy like a fountain. Can you remember the last one? I've got love like the ocean, okay? I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean in my soul, not my shoe. I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean in my soul. So I've got Peace like a river, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got love like the ocean in my soul. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We pray that your blessing would be upon Mrs. Hayward as she comes and teaches. I do pray that the children would learn and listen to the word of God this morning. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Mrs. Hayward, you come. Well, good morning again. Welcome to Sunday School. It's nice to be here talking to you again. I was off last week. I had a little bit of a break, but I am back this week ready to go. Um, How's school? It's the first, well, we're into the second week of school now, the first full week, really. So hope you guys are doing great with that. I see a few of you every once in a while on my bus run, and I see I get to wave. I don't know if you recognize me with my mask. You might not, but um, it's kind of nice to see you when I get a chance. Ronan is loving school. She's not here today because she's at school. So we are having a good time in our house, apparently. So anyway, I have a really good story for us. So let's jump in with prayer and then we'll get started. Father in heaven, I thank you for this time that we can be together, for this time when we can just focus on your word. I pray that you would help us to pay attention, help us to set aside distractions and help us just to hear what you have for us to hear today. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, I have a story for you today about a very special child. And it's a story from the Old Testament, so you know it's not a story about Jesus. He was a very special child too, but that's not the one we're talking about today. This is a story, it starts out 
with his mother. His mother's name was Hannah. And Hannah was married to a man whose name was Elkanah. And he had a second wife. In those days, you could have more than one. And he had a second wife whose name was Penina. And Penina had several children. Hannah did not. And Hannah was very upset about that. That was a very difficult thing, especially in those days. It's a difficult thing now when you want to have children and you're not able to. It's very, very difficult. It's very hurtful and it's hard. But it was especially difficult in those days because it was considered almost a curse to not be able to have a child. It was considered that there was something spiritually wrong with you and that there was something horrible and it was like a blight and you, you, it was just a terrible thing to not be able to have children. And Hannah was not able to have children. And she would go to the temple and she would pray and she would beg God year after year after year, beg him for a child. Please, God, I want a son. I want a son. I want a son. And she would beg him over and over. And one of those years when she went to the temple, she spoke to God and she made God a promise. She said, God, if you will give me a son, I will give him back to you to serve you. Well, God heard her prayer. And she had a baby boy. And she named that baby boy Samuel. And that's where we're looking in our Bible today. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 3 is the chapter we're going to be looking at today. And... Samuel, when he was old enough to, to eat on his own, he didn't need his mother to feed him anymore. When he was old enough, she took him to the temple to live with Eli the priest. That had to be a very difficult thing for that mama to do. I cannot imagine taking Ronan away to live with someone else. It would be a horrible thing for a mother to have to do. And... She did it because she had promised God that she would give her son back to God to serve him. And so she took him to the temple and he lived there with Eli, the priest. And every year when they would come to offer their sacrifice, she would visit her son and she would bring him a little coat because, I mean, he would grow. He was too big for last year's coat. So she would bring him a new coat each year and she would visit with her son. But her son lived in the temple with Eli. Well, God blessed Hannah for keeping her promise and God gave her more children that she had at home with her. But Samuel would always be her firstborn son, and Samuel was always that son of promise. She had made that promise to God. God gave her the son, and she kept her word. Well, Samuel became a very special young man. And we have a story in 1 Samuel chapter 3. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, we have a story. Samuel was just a little boy. And one night it was time for bed and he'd been helping around the temple and doing things, but he didn't really understand it yet. He didn't really know why he was there, but he was there serving in the temple. And he had not heard anything from God. God hadn't, you know, done anything yet. And he didn't quite understand that. Well, one night he went to bed and Eli was sleeping in the other room and Samuel was sleeping in his room. And Samuel heard, Samuel, Samuel. And he went running into Eli. And he said, here I am, Eli, what did you want? And Eli said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you called me. Eli said, I didn't call you, go back to bed. And so Samuel went back to bed. And a few minutes later he heard, Samuel, Samuel. And so he went running back to Eli. Eli must be calling him. He must have been mistaken. And so he ran into Eli and he said, I'm here. What do you want, Eli? And Eli said, Samuel, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Well, a few minutes later, he heard Samuel, Samuel. And he got up the third time and he ran into Eli's room and he said, Eli, I'm here. What do you want? And at this point, Eli realized that it must be God calling Samuel. And so he said, the next time you hear the voice, 
I want you to say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And so Samuel went back to bed. And a few minutes later, he heard Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel remembered what Eli had said to him. And so he said, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And God then proceeded to speak to Samuel and to tell him this prophecy of what he was going to do and what was going to happen in the next little while. And he told Samuel everything that he was going to do. That was the first time Samuel ever heard from God. And he was just a little boy. Samuel grew up to become one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament. Samuel was the one who got to anoint King Saul and King David. That's an incredible honor to anoint the king. And he spoke for God. God would give him prophecies. He would then speak to the people. You see, in those days, they didn't have the Bible. We have the complete word of God in our hands. We don't need prophets now. We don't need people to speak from God to us because God has spoken to us in his word. But they didn't have that. They had men who would hear from God and then they would give God's word to the people. And that's what Samuel became. And Samuel became an incredible prophet of God. And he listened to God and he lived his life for God. But what I want you to hear from this story is that the first time God spoke to Samuel, he was a child, a young child. He was not very old. And he heard from God that first time as a child. Well, what am I wanting to say to you about all of this? Well, I'm wanting to tell you, you are never too young to start listening to what God wants for you. I'm sure someone has come to you at some point and said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I always said, when I was young, I always said, oh, I want to be a veterinarian. I want to be a lab technician. I want to be a um, princess. I don't know. There were all sorts of things I wanted to be when I was a child. And I'm sure you've got different things. If you ask Ronan, Ronan says she wants to be a doctor, a hairdresser, and a princess all in one. And I think that's a great idea because you can get all of your errands done in one spot. You can, you can go to the doctor. You can get your hair done. You can do all these things all in the same spot. I think it's wonderful. But anyway, you've got an answer for that question. When somebody says, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, have you ever thought about asking God, God, what do you want me to be when I grow up? What do you want me to do with my life? What do you, who do you want me to marry? What do you want from me when I'm an adult? You see, God has a plan mapped out for you. God knows what he wants you to do with your life. God can see all the way to the end of the age. God knows all the way until everything's done, what's going to happen. And so God knows the plan that he has worked out for you. And he wants you to follow it. Life is so much easier when you just do what God wants. Life is really, really hard when you keep going against God's will. When you're following the way God wants you to go, it just goes easier. And so Samuel, as a young boy, listened to God. You are not too young to ask God what he wants you to do with your life. What school does he want you to go to? What career does he want you to have? Does he want you to serve in the church? Does he want you to be a pastor? Does he want you to be a missionary, a Sunday school teacher? What does God want you to do? You're never too young to start asking those questions. He loves you and he's got a plan all worked out for you. And life is so much easier when you're going with the plan instead of against it. It's so hard to kick against the plan of God so much smoother and so much easier when you go the way God wants you to. So start to ask him. The first step is making sure that you know Jesus as your savior, because that's the first part of God's will for you. God's ultimate will for you is to know him as your savior. That's his will. So the first step is to make sure that you know Jesus as your savior.
Invite him to forgive your sins. Come and live inside your heart. Wash your heart clean and become your savior. And once you've done that, then God wants to show you his plan. And you are never too young to start to ask. Never. I remember a Sunday school teacher telling me when I was 10 years old that I was not too young to start praying for my spouse or my husband. I was 10 years old. I didn't know who my husband was going to be. But I took her seriously and I began to pray when I was 10 years old that God would bring me the husband that he had for me. Well, when I met my husband, it turns out that he became a Christian the year that I was 10 years old. That's when he accepted Jesus as his savior. The year that I started to pray for him is the year that he became a Christian. I didn't know him. I didn't know who I was praying for, but I knew that I wanted to pray for my spouse and I did. You're never too young. God's plan is already in place and he just wants to lead you through it. He just wants you to ask him. So that is what I want you to do this week. I want you to start seeking the face of God, asking God what it is he wants you to do with your life. Because if you start now, asking him and making decisions based on what you believe he wants you to do, everything is just going to go much easier than it would if you go your own way and God has to draw you back into his will. That's, that's my, my wish for you this week. Start to ask God what it is he wants for you to do. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you're God. And I thank you that you have a plan all worked out for all of us. I thank you that you know what you want us to do. And I thank you that you've worked all of that out in advance. I pray that you would help each of us to ask you every day what it is you want us to do. Because we know that if we ask you, you will show us what you want. And so I just pray that we would be like Samuel and we would say, speak because I'm listening. And we would just listen to what you have to tell us. And I pray that you would help each of us to find the path that you have for us to walk on. First of all, Lord, I pray if there's anyone here listening who doesn't know you as their savior, that that would be the first step, that today they would come and they would receive Jesus as their savior. But after that, I pray that we would each seek out your will for us and try to find the direction you want us to go. Go with us through the rest of our day. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy. I pray that as we're back in school, that you would help us to stay healthy and stay safe. And I just pray that very soon we'd be able to be back together in church again. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good week.